Well, good afternoon, everybody. Hi, Dan. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing, John? Just fine. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Oxymorons. It's great to have everyone here. For those of you that are not familiar with the series, what I uh, try to do is talk to people that um, I consider to be either practical dreamers or visionary pragmatists, depending on whether you are a, uh, I don't know if it's a glass full, glass em half empty kind of thing, but it's uh, mainly was a thing that I came up with during COVID because um, I was tired of sitting by myself and uh, looking at the wall. So I uh, started chatting with uh, interesting people and interesting friends and uh, it's kind of taken off a little bit. And um, so welcome to the show. Good to have you here, um, Dan. Oh, it's great to be here. So the, um, the deal on this for people that are tuning in is that you can comment on the show, particularly if you're on LinkedIn. I think it works for the other platforms as well, but if you're on LinkedIn. So if you are on LinkedIn, we would love to have you share the show with your network. We would also love to have you comment and we'll pop your comments up during the course of the conversation. And then lastly, um, for some, um, modules that are uh, in use. You'll see the little clap hands and the little like, you know, waves and the little hearts and all that kind of stuff. So just push the hell out of those buttons and, and uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't really quite know what those buttons do, but uh, we'll uh, hopefully that'll have some sort of impact just, on something. Just be nice. Just, just... <laughs> just be nice. Yeah. Don't give us this kind of thing. Just, just a nice one. That's all we want. So this one's a little different than some of my uh, oxymorons things. And I wanna focus on this question of, of creativity. And um, the reason that I, I came in, uh, I've known Dan for a long time. He was uh, on the board at AIM and he was chair at AIM. And I always kind of thought of thought of Dan as being like the, uh, the SharePoint guy, you know, kind of the IT SharePoint guy um, for uh, the association that he worked for. And, and so that was act one if you will um act two which uh and then you have a cat there i think too i do you? and i and i i fight this cat for my chair <laughs> we're at a point in the day where the chair is normally the cats <laughs> <laughs> so we'll try we'll try to muddle through that so the uh um so act two i i encountered with dan i kind of kind of um had it a little bit around the edges and then um, in my shameless product um, placement, I, I just wrote this book called Immigrant Secrets, which uh, um, those of you that don't have Christmas gifts yet, it is an ideal Christmas gift. And Jeff <laughs> Bezos promises that on Amazon, he'll get it to you in time for the holidays. But Dan was kind enough to um, have me on his show um, and on his blog as a guest to talk a little bit about the book. And I started poking around a little bit at all the stuff that you are doing on this uh, uh, on this platform, which is running across the bottom, by the way, uh, nofacilities.com. And I would urge everybody to take a look at that. And we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but that got me thinking like, you know, wow, this is such an interesting second act that Dan has. And for some people that know a lot of SharePoint people, you might think like, wow, this is a very different second act than people might expect. So. I thought I'd just start with a couple intro questions. Um, first of all, favorite binge during COVID? Uh, two, two answers there. Uh, peanut M&Ms, <laughs> number one. Peanut, wait, 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 peanut or peanut butter? Peanut butter, peanut butter, yes, yes, peanut yes, butter yes, M&Ms. Yes, yes. And talking to my brother, uh, I, I started calling him. And uh, now it's like once a week, we talk for about three or four hours. And it was just one of those like you were saying earlier, you're stuck at home. There's nothing to do. And it's like, I'll just give my brother a call. And then that just kept going. So we, we've been doing that now for uh, about 18 months. So wow, that's cool. And, and it's interesting because he's, he's a little older than me. And there's things about our family that each of us knows that the other one doesn't um, because of, you know, when we entered and exited the, uh, the scene. So... But, Interesting. Uh, that, 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 yeah, I, and I love uh, peanut butter M and M's. Oh yeah, I just yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> much better than, than any of the rest of them by far. So. They are. They are. <laughs> uh, most surprising song or artist on your playlist? Uh, that would have to be. Well, the one that people find surprising is "Foggy Mountain Breakdown" by Earl Scruggs uh -huh. and Friends. Okay. So, um, a little bit of bluegrass guitar in there. So. 
or uh, banjo. Banjo. Yep. So um, um, just a reminder to folks, you can uh, post a comment if you like, or a question, or uh, just a snide remark. No, no snide remark, <laughs> but uh, um, along the way. And um, just remember, some of you will be here someday. So <laughs> yes, and, and uh, push those little uh, clap hand buttons and all that kind of good stuff. So tell me about your background in technology before we talk about Act 2. Uh, Background in technology was was an interesting act one for me because it wasn't planned. I was I went to school to be a chemist. I have a BS in chemistry, and I wanted to work in a crime lab. The in the dark ages there weren't degrees in forensic chemistry like there are now. So my advisor told me to focus on computer assisted analytic chemistry because that was the way things were going, um, and he pointed out to me toward the uh, end of my senior year that I was better with computers than I was glassware <laughs> and suggested that I consider that for a career as opposed to chemistry, uh, which was hard to take because I slogged through four years of, of chemistry. But uh, I went uh, from West Virginia University. I went to University of Pittsburgh for an MBA in operations research and then I worked for a couple of companies that don't exist anymore, Burroughs <laughs> and uh, Airborne Freight. And I bounced around. I did consulting for six or seven years. All in, everything for me tied back to what I learned in chemistry, which was problem solving. Okay. Um, and um, and that's, that's really where my technology career grew out of that. It grew out of problem being someone who can wasn't afraid to solve problems, so interesting. So, um, and and then at what point did you um, um, wander into the um, um, into the groves of SharePoint? <laughs> well, in uh, in the late nineties, our I was uh, you know de managing a systems development group, uh, database development, systems development. Uh, for our company. In the late 90s, our board told our president, our CEO, that uh, we we needed to think about document management. We needed to think about preserving knowledge, institutional knowledge, um, all that stuff. And my boss said, we were in a staff meeting, and he said, ah, oh, that sounds technical. So, Dan, that's yours. <laughs> <laughs> and I... I didn't, I really didn't know anything uh, about it. I had no idea. Um, unstructured content was like, like, like this pile of crap on my desk. I mean, that's, uh, that's it. <laughs> I, I went to uh, an AIM New England meeting that uh, I caught wind of and uh, it, it went from there. We, we actually wrote, because I was a systems developer and I had programmers working for me, we actually wrote a document management system Oh. Uh, we were a small company. We couldn't afford to buy one, which they were like six figures back then. Um, we wrote one that was that was pretty cool, and it worked. Uh, it was it didn't have you know all the bells and whistles, but it did what we wanted it to do. And then, as with any system that you develop, you have to maintain it, which was like oh god, there's one more big thing in the maintenance heap. <laughs> and then Microsoft came out with SharePoint. And I went to a demo of it actually for our, uh, the vendor was s hyping it for a completely different feature. And I looked at that and I thought, oh my God, this could replace our document management system in a heartbeat. And we started going down that, that road. So uh, I was the SharePoint guy for, for 13 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... Tell me about your uh, your blog, and uh, here let me put up the uh, the little uh, link to it so people can know how to get to it. And uh, nofacilities.com. So tell me about the name. Um, no facilities it was when I I went to the University of Georgia my freshman year, and then I transferred to West Virginia University. And uh, if if anybody on the on the in the group is not uh, as old as I am, they probably think the interstate highways were always there, but uh, they weren't built when I went to West Virginia. So from 
somewhere mid Pennsylvania, mid still in Pennsylvania, midway on the ride. Um, you know, I had to get off and drive this mountain curvy, hilly, no guardrails road, and then. I got back on the highway for the last 10 miles uh, to the to Morgantown and I had to go to the bathroom and there's a rest area up ahead and so I pull into this rest area and there's this big sign that says no facilities and I was like great <laughs> this is just great what kind um, of a rest area is this <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously what, what am I resting my horse <laughs> it's like um and but I I just always thought of that and I thought at at that time, I mean, I'm I'm 19. I'm you know self-absorbed, and uh, why is this happening to me? <laughs> kind of thing. And uh, I I was joking with some friends of mine that I said, you know, if I ever write a book, I'm going to call it No Facilities. And of course, that never happened. But um, I decided to use it for uh, a blog name. I had a technical blog. You might remember SharePoint Stories. Yeah. Uh, and I knew that I couldn't continue that um, after I retired. I actually couldn't even continue it after we started doing succession planning because I would talk about mistakes that I had made and you can't do that when it, somebody else made them. <laughs> so I wanted to start a, what I, what I enjoy, it was never a technical blog, it was, it was a story uh, blog. I talked about what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it. And the, um, the thing I liked about it was telling the stories. So I decided that uh, I was going to set up a, a start a personal blog that would just be telling stories. I ignored all the uh, advice about picking a topic and building an audience, and I said, "Ah, you know, I'm just going to go with. I'm just going to do what I want to do, and if people follow, they follow. If they don't, they don't." Uh, so it's been about 11 years, and um, I've you know gone from you know. 30, 30 people a month reading it to uh, a, a good group of followers. And a, as you saw when you were uh, at the virtual bar, a, uh, a lot of interaction. Yeah, I have to hand it to you. I was uh, um, telling, I told you after we were on there, you know, I Dan has a, a little uh, um, um, contrivance where it's like stopping by the bar and talking to people. And so he had me stop by the bar and, um, ordered my bourbon and uh, we <laughs> talked about my book immigrant secrets and then the part that just blew me away after the fact is that you probably had more comments on 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 my post than i have had on like any blog post. <laughs> and i've been doing blog posts for a long time and i was so impressed by that it was like wow this is like this is an audience that's actually reading this stuff and i was very and, and a couple of them bought your book <laughs> yeah which was even better you know but, but it's you know what, what do you what do you attribute that to not the buying the book but what do you attribute the the interaction to i mean that's i, I, I really mean it it was it's very uncharacteristic i've written lots of blog posts and I, people very I, seldom comment i think it's the storytelling i think people like stories they 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 like to hear stories and if you you know i i read all the the comments and a lot of them are just that it, it isn't even so much about what i wrote it's that it invokes a memory that they have or it makes them think about something that they want to share uh, and i have people following me that that have a wordpress account but they don't have a blog but mm -hmm. they'll share their own you know stories about something from it um and it's so i i think that's mainly it's it's just like it's what people want to do they want to share the stories they have and they 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 like listening to stories or reading stories and do you think most of the um most of the readers are aspiring writers or appreciative of writing or i i have several followers and and i follow their blogs as well who are published authors who who some of whom are quite successful um and um and it's it's interesting because one of them um i think i i mentioned is has been helping me with writing and it's it's been sign of a kind of a collaborative thing so maybe not so far from sharepoint um we collaborated on a book her name is tegan genevine and we collaborated on a book that she wrote where she wrote the book and i provided uh, she wrote she she did it as a series of a serial story in in her blog and i provided the photographs 
So oh, wow. I, I would go that. out. I would yeah. go out and do you know photography around certain subjects, and then in a lot of cases, what she mostly does is she she works from things things that uh, her readers give her, and she incorporates them into the story. So for this story, she incorporated the, the photographs that I gave her, and that's what oh. drove her. Um, I I could never write like that. I need an outline and you know. Um, like a, a countdown clock going, but um, she's very good at, you know, putting that together. So we did that as a collaboration and uh, it's, uh, you know, we used some technology there. I, we shared things through box. Um, so it was, you know, it was, it was fun. Um, and then uh, she started giving me writing exercises because she's like, you know, you're, you're, you need to, try something different um so we started doing that and then um you know moving on so so this what if you were to be sentenced for some penance or something and had to go back and read the blog from from 11 years ago you, you would see that it's it it's changed dramatically over time it's evolved um as i've gotten more comfortable uh writing and as you know uh, um the um the, the the bar was I just I got uh, I started off everybody was doing if we were having a cup of coffee so this kind of coffee share and it's a popular theme for, for yeah. blogs um, but I was like well I I'm done with coffee <laughs> so, so I wanted to so I started off just saying if we were having a beer right. um, and I, I broke out like that so then it then we ended up with a bar so in January, the bar gets a name. <laughs> so, um, for for I think for two years, the person at the bar with me was just referred to as my buddy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he didn't have a name, so he's become David. Um, and um, I've always had the bartender, who is also a friend of mine in a in a writing group that I'm in. Um, but um, she's not really a bartender, but she's you know she's there and she we collaborate on some things because i don't want to attribute something to her that's not the case so it'd be like cheryl i assume you hate this as much as i do and she's like oh i love that it's like oh, <laughs> <laughs> we have to change this how we have to change the story <laughs> so so do you have a book in the works or anything I, in, with, after all this i do i do oh, i okay. have a uh, i have a trilogy in the works oh, good lord um, so um why a trilogy i well, I had a book that I wanted to write, and I, I started with an outline, and then I started actually writing it, and, um, and uh, Tegan was helping me with that. And I had um, some questions, and uh, I had gotten sort of the outline and started writing some snippets of the end of the book, even though I hadn't written the first 70,000 pages or 70,000 words. And I made a comment to her one time that the 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 ending kind of begged a sequel and and she's like well people have sequels all the time and then um, when i started writing the beginning of the book there were things i wanted to refer back to that had happened the main characters in these in these books are adults they're uh, recently retired ironically um but there was there was it was necessary to bring out some things that happened in their childhood um so i wanted to know how to do that i was experimenting with the, different ways of uh, kind of bringing up memories or flashback scenes and she suggested just writing a third book um, and I was like I I don't even know how to write one <laughs> it's like, um, so it um, it worked out it ended up uh, I I left the the book I wanted to write which is now book number two I left that I went off and wrote the um, the, the first book which is the sort of the childhood story and then it was much easier to write the second book after that because there was so much that I explored so hopefully in the spring uh, you'll see those popping up on Amazon Wow I'm impressed because I, I I tell you I, I, uh, I know how hard my 60,000 words was to write <laughs> and uh, how many words between the three between the three, about two hundred and fifty thousand. Oh, good lord! Wow. So, but I've been certain. retired the whole. Yeah, I've been retired for two years, John. So, and oh, not retired good. like you. 
<laughs> well, that's, that's that's really exciting. I'm 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 um, I will look forward to it. I urge everybody to uh, to watch for it, and uh, we'll talk about that when it comes out. Um, for any folks out there that um, want to uh, shoot us a comment, please don't hesitate to do so, and we'll see if we can address those during the course of the uh, last few minutes of our uh, conversation here. Um, let me full circle around back to uh, real life work. And you obviously have a creative streak in you. Um, I'd like to think everybody does, but um, it's more evident in others, in some than in others. And um, so how did creativity enter into how you approached obstacles back in your work times? It was, uh, it was very important. Uh, and it was an attribute that I looked for in the people that joined our team because we were a very small company. But we had, we, we had, uh, it was a, a joint underwriting association. So you have member companies that supply you with the capacity to ensure your uh, platform, what your, your product line, which were nuclear in reactors. And so they kind of expected the large international insurance companies kind of expected us to have the same cap systems capabilities that they had. And but we had a budget that, budget that was just this tiny fraction of their budget. So you couldn't buy some. I couldn't buy an ECM system. I mean, a six figure, six figures was my budget. Uh, I, I had a hardware budget of about, you know, eighty thousand dollars a year and software of about twenty five. So it's like, oh, wow. I can't, I can't buy, um, you know, an ECM solution. So, and we couldn't buy a lot of things. Um, so. We, uh, we had to find interesting ways uh, to do it. You, I don't know if you remember, but the first time I spoke at an AIM conference, you introduced me. And the title of my presentation was, I had to look this up, was um, Robust Communication on a Modest Budget. Oh, OK. And uh, because we had an engineer, the vice president of engineering in 1995 told me, that I, he said, I want my engineers to be as productive when they're on the road as they are in the office. And I'm like, that's impossible. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, um, so we had, um, we had a, uh, if you remember, uh, CC Mail. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, CC Mail had a remote uh, product that you could pair up with it. So you could call in and get your, download your mail and edit it offline and call in again and connect. And, so we were we were using that platform, and we had engineers traveling around that were going to uh, hotels that didn't even have data ports. So, um, and okay. I still have one of these. So we have an RJ11 jack on one end of a six foot cord, and a red and green alligator clip on the other end. And I gave him a screwdriver. <laughs> so just, get into your hotel, take the phone jack apart, and clip these wires on. Um, but. Uh, they were engineers, so they were willing to do that. <laughs> but um, we stressed we stressed cre creativity in the hiring because it was like sometimes what we want doesn't exist, and sometimes what we want we can't afford, so we have to build it. Um, so you like creative people. Um, let's flip it the other way. Um, what kind of people, um, either professionally or personally, drive you crazy? <laughs> Uh, people who won't listen, people who just, uh, I can remember that from aim board meetings. <laughs> <laughs> well, true. <laughs> just, we had a big board back then, so we don't have to name names, but, um, uh, yeah, that that would frustrate me, uh, at, um, at work because we're trying to introduce something, trying to move things along. Um, my, my definition that I uh, absorbed from my coworkers of ECM was the stuff I have to do to make somebody else's job easier. Yeah, yeah. that seemed to be how they approached it. It's like I don't, I don't need any of this. I know where my stuff is. You're, you're making me do this so other people can find it. It's like, <laughs> give me a break. Um, but um, so, yeah, I was on a. Uh... <clears throat> on a call today with a company and they were talking about um, just an effort to implement an automated disposition kind of system mm. for um, 
you know, for stuff that's not really um, um, important to keep. And and they were talking about the just the cultural obstacles associated with this is my stuff. I don't want you touching my stuff. <laughs> I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to uh, abide by your rules with handling my stuff. And but yeah, um, exactly. And who are you people? And what are you? What are you? Uh, what are you trying to pull over on me? So. Um, yeah, I, I don't miss that. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Well, let me uh, just one last question is, um, you know, and kind of my country Western uh, sort of question is, um, what do you know now that you wish you knew then? Uh, how, how easy it is to overthink things. Um, and I guess sort of the corollary to that is, and what a, what a huge waste of time it is. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I have always tended to be that person who just you know wants to look at things from 25 different angles as opposed to three yeah we share we share some of that i think um i you know but i think you remember my friend uh atla who worked for yes. um, aim and and the part that that he and i both have used to laugh about is that you know i was kind of always you know well, what about this and what about this and think about this and think about that Atla would decide to do something and like 10 minutes later he had implemented it <laughs> and it was and for the most part that served uh, both of us very well but it was just so different and i wished i had a little bit more of that kind of uh, immediacy about some not overthinking things so i know what you mean by that yeah so well any uh, any parting words for the uh for the uh, millions of people listening right now <laughs> Um, retirement is a very good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't resist it. Don't resist it. Um, so I was, I, I, I do think I was fortunate to retire November of 2019. Uh, right. So um, when the pandemic hit, it was like, oh, well, I'm already home. Yep. Uh, um, my plan to visit uh, the uh, hundreds of small museums across new england went out the window but yeah. uh, as most of them closed at least for a while and some still haven't opened but yeah well it's been great having you i really uh, i really enjoyed the conversation when we were um, talking about the book and the interaction with some of the people that follow you was uh, was it was, was really meaningful to me. There was a lot of really good conversations in those comments and I really appreciated that. And uh, let me know when the book is published, both to uh, both to read it and pimp it out. So, okay, uh, appreciate uh, that. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look forward to it. And you're always, you're always welcome to come back to the bar. So. Anytime, <laughs> I, I, I've never been known to pass it up. So yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> okay. well, have a happy holiday, Dan. You too, John. Take care. Take care.